about to try this now. Actually, let's turn this way down, because holy hell, that is loud. Oh, man, we're going to hear my voice here in a second, because there we go. All right, let's make sure that's okay. I'm going to turn the desktop audio way down, because, my God, the trains are going to be just killing y'all. But hello, hello, welcome back to the channel, welcome to the stream. Welcome back to the Carabasa here. Today we are in Flagstaff Yard, looking southward towards Mount, or Bigelow, the Bigelow Range. We are up here, we got T-Pop311, hello. David Mitchell, hello, welcome. And we absolutely, we gotta jam out to some uh, pretty thunderous metal before we go ahead and uh, you know stream the Carabasset, because of course that's what uh, metal's meant for. It's meant for the Carabasset, of course, naturally. Um, be on here for a little bit. I don't, you know, gonna stream for maybe a couple hours, and then I'm gonna go eat, and, uh, maybe try to get to bed. Uh, but we are up here in Flagstaff Yard. I have not done much work on the Carabasset as of late, uh, just because, well, I've been just trying to keep my head on my shoulders and haven't really been interested, but I, I do want to run some trains. I'm playing a lot of NASCAR as of late. And I said, well, you know what? I've done, been doing a lot of that, so let's let's go back to here and uh, let's get the uh, yard kind of populated up. And it's a little sparse right now because all the cars are kind of sorted out. And so uh, right now we're waiting on a train. Uh, we're waiting on a train to come up from um, from North Anson, which uh, if I'm look, I gotta find the train list real quick. Uh, if I can find the train list, that I can go ahead and uh, say what train that is. Uh, let me see. It's gonna be ah, CBVR train symbols. Perfect. So currently speaking, right now, uh, I don't think there's actually a uh, train that comes up from a uh, Kennebec to Flagstaff. Uh, let me see here. Uh, those are all locals. I don't have a f uh, Flagstaff bound train in from uh, North Anson, it looks like, which is a little odd, in my opinion. I don't know why that was created as such, because looking here, we have Mechanic to Flagstaff. Lock Mechanic to Kennebec, Flagstaff to Mechanic, Kennebec to Mechanic. But no Kennebec to uh, Flagstaff, which is an important movement. Uh, but regardless, it'd be uh, F uh, KBFS coming up. So we have F KBFS. And then we also have a southbound, uh, I believe, a trash train coming down, which is going to be. Uh, Trash Empties. This is the first run of the day, so G uh, L M A F one, which will be coming down with uh, some empty trash hoppers. Can you do a route tour update, David? If you actually you go back to the channel, uh, if you'd actually watch some of my previous videos, uh, I did previously do a route tour update for stream number sixty, so you'll be happy to know that. Um, if you want to go back and check that out, uh, I will grab a link for you. But I've already done a route tour. I'm not doing another one. Um, there's really nothing to see right now. Uh, but route or t uh, build number 60 should be the full tour. I, and I do mean the full tour. Uh, I'm pretty sure that looks at all parts of the Carabasset uh, in its current form. So if you go watch this, David, uh, right there in the chat, that will take you to the last stream. And you can check out the... Uh, the most up-to-date tour of the route. So yeah, so not much else going on on screen. So like I said, we're just gonna kind of wait for the next train to come in. Um, we got a, a set of cars all ready to go on the departure track. That's gonna be heading out. Um, one thing we could do is it's already kind of set up. We do have these cars over here, which would have come up on uh, the the Kingfield turn. Um, and that is, I believe, um, uh, L-FS42, the uh, milepost 17 in Kingfield branched Tuesday through Saturday run. Uh, and, of course, well, today's now uh, 
Thursday, so we'll be doing a direct rundown there. So these are the cars that just came up, which actually, if you uh, look here, hit Control N, we actually have car tags. I went ahead and did some car tagging, or uh, some co industry codes. And so these will need to get sorted out and possibly re-tagged um, to where they're currently heading. I don't believe out of here they're going to get re-tagged. I mean, uh, we already kind of know where they're heading um, and where they're coming from. Um, it doesn't really matter right now to me too terribly much uh, where they're heading to because I already know that these cars are going to be heading southward to uh, North Anson and from North Anson they'll get re-tagged and redistributed to where they need to go. Uh, but currently this is the cars coming uh, heading back out towards Kennebec and their uh, customer code. So uh, we have the Dead River oil tank cars, we have uh, a limestone slurry tank car, which would have come in from Sappy Chain of Ponds. This is the, on the slurry track, so uh, Sappy Chain of Ponds slurry. Um, Flagstaff Dead River tank. Uh, ALC would be uh, Arnold Lumber, I believe it is. Uh, Arnold Lumber, yep. This is Arnold Lumber center beam. And then, of course, you have Sappy Chain of Ponds uh, Hopper, which is a uh, starch, corn starch being brought up for the paper production. We have uh, Chain of Ponds uh, Tank, which is uh, for the um, Mafka up there. We have uh, Udaken Gravel, which is up on the old Rangeley Secondary, but uh, Flagstaff Udaken Gravel. Uh, box car for the Sappy Chain of Ponds, Sappy Chain of Ponds box. So you kind of get the idea of how these all work uh, and so on and so forth. So uh, those are the car tags. And of course, when we uh, get the new next train coming in, it'll have a whole bunch of different cars um, uh, on it that'll need to be sorted out. And that train just left North Anson, so it's going to be pro a little bit before it gets up here. So I guess we can kind of go in and, and maybe start getting uh, these all sorted out, because we actually have two locals to sort through uh, and kind of get ready, because we already have one train that's heading out. Uh, these will be for uh, another train t tomorrow, more than likely. Um, so we can go ahead and get that moving. We can probably actually spit most of these out onto... Um, probably uh, put most of these on uh, the back of this train or at least shove these loaded because these these box cars should all be loaded so we can put that in the front of this train and then ship that out and then put the empties out in the rear because we don't want to you know do that so we're going to go ahead and jump in uh, I'm going to grab let me see move to train we're going to move you over here I'm also going to turn down the render distance that way I don't lag out as much it's not exactly what I wanted. Let me see. Video settings. <laughs> okay, never mind. I think this train just needs to be turned around. Nope, it was facing the right way. Switch the right way, perfect. So we're gonna go ahead and switch those cars around. Do a little bit of more yard work and we'll get this consist kind of actually pushed back a little bit and ready for the outbound movement. Now we have to be careful because like I said, we'll have a train coming down here. Uh, that's the trash train. We're gonna throw these two helpers onto that the rear of that. And then we'll have another train coming up uh, that we'll have to, to kind of work with. Uh, no pine liners are scheduled right now. Uh, we might get one that comes through later on. Uh, kind of head north. Hey, Mal. Welcome to the stream. Actually, Mal, I'm, uh, I'm actually... Uh, your track chart that you had made uh, came in handy not too long ago because I had kind of up and forgotten exactly what tracks do what because I can't remember what any of these tracks are. Uh, so your track chart that you made actually kind of came in handy a little bit, so... So 
So I think what we'll do first is we're going to grab the box cars uh, and we're going to put them on to the second track here. Or we might even put them here in this little run around. Then we'll grab the empties, throw them out. We'll drag them through the yard, put them on the rear end of the, uh, the outbound. And then we'll grab the loads and then throw them on the front. Try to block this nicely so there's no loads at the rear. Need to redo it now that we've fleshed out with flat. Yeah, I mean, I think it actually, you know, it works mostly fine. I mean, I don't have any qualms with it so far. Uh, it actually works quite nice. So, I mean, if you feel like you need to flesh it out, go right ahead. I welcome it. Um, but you do whatever you feel is the best. Slow down some. Uh, let me slow down a little more. Maybe slow down a lot more. And just. There we go. Alright. So I actually got quite a few box cars. should all fit on this track right here and that'll give us a chance to run around it and uh, move it onto the front so we'll go ahead and disconnect and we'll go ahead and move back I hope you all are doing well. I've had a good week. I've actually had some exciting news personally. Uh, it's a little bittersweet, I suppose. Uh, sold the Crown Vic. Crown Vic is now gone. Or, well, I traded it in, actually. Uh, the Crown Vic is uh, no longer. Uh, unfortunately, it was time for a new car, and um, well, it just needed to go, and I was able to sell a Focus for a few hundred bucks, and now it's crushed. So, and thank god for that I hated that car it's a nice car just and I'm sure it was nice when it was brand new but uh, it wasn't nice while I had it so but focus is gone the Crown Vic is gone and I got a 2018 Nissan Sentra which is really nice really really nice and it's really really good on gas uh, I'm in bed right now so if I stop responding I fell asleep well Mal if I uh, don't get a chance to say so uh, sleep well chat with you when we chat with you. Yeah, sorry for these late streams. I uh, never really get around to streaming any earlier. It's because I'm always busy and stuff like that, so. Pull us a little further. Come on. There you go. Bring it back just a little more. I'll just jam on the independent. Do love listening to those engines rev up. Mm. Yep, so you got a nice, shiny, well, relatively newish car. And I only had 70,000 miles on it when I bought it, so. Least amount of miles I've ever had on a car. So. I'll take it. And hopefully, it'll last me for many, many years to come. I'd like to get it five six years out of it because I think I'll be paying on it for the next five six years so see how long I can make it last and you know we'll go from there so like to at least have it long enough to pay it off and then have it you know no payment for at least a year or two but we'll wait and see how well that works out by the time I get there 
figured out, but by the time I'm done paying off this car, I'll be in my 30s. And that's a scary thought. <laughs> that is a scary thought, I, th I believe. Uh, I'm not mistaken uh, where I'll be, so... Um, Yeah, it's about five and a half years, so I'll be well in, I'll be 31, almost 32 by the time this car's paid off, so I'm curious to see where I'll be at that point. And we can go ahead and throw the brakes on, maybe a little quicker than that. There we go. So that is about, excuse you. Excuse you. Hmm. I don't know why I can't view those. Hmm. Strange. Okay. All right then. Won't worry about it. Um, I should be able to shove this cut. Oh, yeah, we got plenty of room. So we're going to see what these two little engines can do. Not sure if I'll be able to get the empties on, but they can definitely go on the next train. And I have to take a couple center beams and throw them somewhere else, so... This is kind of the plan for the day. We're going to be uh, kind of just sticking around up here and trying to get trains assembled and get some trains broken down and set up to where in the next stream we can run a local. We can either stream the Kingfield turn itself or we can uh, go ahead and stream a and turn up to Sappy Chain of Ponds, which we haven't been up to in a while. Oh, you got a cat butt. Which apparently looking at it, the Chain of Ponds turn itself for the actual town is its own separate thing. It's not a, it's not a uh, sappy incorporated turn. Because I used to take the sea cars bound for like the Mafka and put them on the back end of the uh, sappy train, and then just set those cars out, switch them at the very end after I'm done switching out the paper mill, and then head back. But now it looks like those are two completely separate movements, uh, incorporating the Coburn loadout, which is a logging co loadout, further north. Um, which I'll discuss here in a little bit, kind of more what that is. Because uh, looking at it, the flags, the uh, sappy turn is the uh, FS40L. It's a dedicated uh, sappy job, which goes to the paper mill, uh, which I think we've definitely done a few streams of that movement. So yeah, I definitely think we've more than streamed that a few times. Um, and that services Sappy North, Sappy North America Chain of Ponds is uh, pretty much all their tracks, as well as it can service the Kibby Wind Farm Project. So anything bound for the Kibby Wind Farm Project, which is a service by need track, will run. Um, usually gets thrown on the back of that movement. That's a movement that goes out fairly frequently, I want to say. Um, FS40L. FS40L is a Monday through Friday. Simply referred to as just the sappy job. Uh, which is confusing because there's two sappy paper mills on the route. One down in uh, Scowhegan and one up here in Chain of Ponds. But this is the original sappy, so... Oh, Toby, you're a cat. Oh, no. Look at you being a man. Not bad. Let me see if I get those Corona switched over to the yellow ones.
So we'll reverse in, pull these forward, and then we'll throw them on the front of that train. That's going to be a chance to get those engines through the notches because uh, it's going to take a bit of movement to get that train going f uh, backwards. I don't know why it's not showing me some of those rail cars. It's a weird bug. That is strange. I don't know why it's not letting me do that. Hmm. Very weird. Anyhow, uh, so it's about eh, 42 and a half tons. Or 42. Oh, fuck. I don't know what I'm trying to say. 4,251 tons. And when the next train comes in, like I said, we'll be able to pretty much repopulate this area uh, and start building a, another consist to head out uh, with a lot of the cars that are already over here. I think these box cars will just kind of get away with getting on this train. Because the arrival track... Uh, is about 4,100 feet, where the departure is about 3,900. We're not quite at our max length yet, so... Say we get about 630 feet on this consist. I know that was like a 2,700 or 2,800 foot consist, so... This is kind of the gist of what goes on up here at this, this yard, so... Just a lot of just... daily movements heading out getting these cars switched I mean this is going to be every yard in a nutshell I mean not just this yard in particular but this being kind of one of the most uh, I think this is the one of two yards that you'll have access to when you get the route uh, the other one being lock mechanic so you'll have mechanic and you'll have uh, the yard down here in flagstaff I don't know what you really call this. I don't know if this is a division point yard. Uh, you know, because it's right kind of in the middle of the Bigelow. Alright, so let's see. Right, we'll shove him back. Howdy, Odin. Welcome. But, uh, but yes, I mean, you'll have access to both these yards, one or both Mechanic and Flagstaff Yard, uh, once we get the route done. If I can find more motivation to get back on King Felix, I need to get down there and start detailing the uh, town area and getting the trees put in and making it absolutely abomination for frames. Also, kind of wondering when the uh, southbound and northbound movements will be coming up. Or when we should be seeing them. Start creeping in here. Slow down a little more. Beautiful. Why do I not have an engineer? I do now. Weird. 
Oh wait, that was already showing. Still not showing that box car. That's strange. All right, let's push it back even further. Not sure if this train's actually gonna be able to do it. It's trying. <laughs> Come on, little train. Uh, let's try it for pulling it forward real quick, see what happens. Yeah, I'll go forward. But Oh, come on, you. <laughs> Do not make me throw you in a notch seven, come on. It is trying. I can see it just creeping. There we go. Got some momentum. Just needed to give it a give it the juice. Oh, and it's Toby. Hello, sir. Why is your tail the size of a tree? Alright. Go ahead and throw it idle. We'll set it up. Start charging the brakes. Please stop. Beautiful. So I wouldn't suppose we really have much more room for anything else. Uh, let me see here. Uh, we could probably sneak a few more cars in on the rear. Make the most out of this movement. Um, we could save this for another train, so we'll go ahead and we'll just call this good where it's at. So we'll go ahead and we'll call this train good. Now what we need to do is uh, we're going to come up behind here, I guess, which will require us to uh, come up towards the crossing. So we're going to come up towards the crossing and Something I generally like to do is switch around the crossing, but it needs to be done because we gotta kind of move in on the uh, classification tracks, I guess, to kind of get ready for the next train. Did you have a handbrake on it? I don't know. I just, I mean, it wasn't really that heavy of a movement. Um, which, by the way, the chat is on a separate window from the game, so if I take a little bit to respond, that's probably why. 
is. Well, that's actually why, because I gotta switch between pages. Let me actually see. Let me pull it up on my phone and uh, just keep an eye on the chat that way. I got plenty of battery, so. Do you use any program to get the train generation? If so, what's the best way to get it? So actually, we used um, a thing called uh, Dem Terrain. I don't know what uh, application my friend used. I can ask him what, what application he used, because uh, somebody made this train for us. Uh, we did have someone make a couple of extensions. Actually, no, he same guy made the extensions, too. So I can ask him what uh, application he used uh, at some point. And, It'll be kind of a further, I'll get back to you on that, because I don't actually know, but uh, DEMs is usually what people go with, and he kind of took, uh, I'm assuming Google Earth kind of terrain data. I, I really don't know. I'm just speculating, I suppose. All right, so we're going to grab the loaded cars first, bring them out, and then uh, push them onto the rear end of those I guess our uh, signal department needs to come out and yeah, I guess our signal department needs to come out and take a look at this because uh... also I need to figure out why these gantry signals are no longer there because like I said they appear if you zoom out they'll say there's a signal there there's really not because uh, in case you haven't noticed there's no signals up on that bridge eagerly awaiting the arrival of uh, one of the two movements kind of would prefer the uh, North Anson bound train to get here first just because that will give us the most to do because uh, that train will al provide uh, bleh, that train will al allow us to kind of start breaking down uh, the next movements and stuff like that so um, you know really getting a uh, a nice consist together to send out to the the in respective industries so right, start slowing it down we could check and see where where it is just out of curiosity because I mean personally I am just a little interested to see where it is at because I've noticed uh, in 19 trains have a tendency to get stuck a little more even if they're going to track markers and stuff like that they just throw a big tendency to get stuck. I don't know why. I had a cat, don't know where he went. Actually, let me, uh, I need to go just take some laundry out of the dryer real quick, so I'll be right back.
Alrighty, sorry, just remembered that. I had some laundry going and uh, my work shirt was in there and I didn't want to get all wrinkled and stuff like that, so oh, we are not heading the right way. Oh, let's go forward, please. There we go. Alright, let's get this moving back going forward, so. There we go. So the signal worked a little better this time, so. Beautiful. Now we got seven people watching. That's pretty good for one of my streams. I'll take that. Actually, I might be one of those people. <laughs> well, I got six people watching, so I'll even take that. That's better than most nights. Start airing up the consist. Probably a little too early on that. Oh, no, you don't. I'm not approaching the end, am I? No, I'm not even close. So I have a little track map down there. Here, cat. Right, push back. To throw another crossing thing in there to. So let's see where um, the other train is. So I forget who was driving it. Oh, is that him? Ah, oh, beautiful. He's making great time. He should be here relatively quickly. That is him, right? Yeah. No, he's, he's making good time. He'll be here pretty soon. Because I didn't start him much before I... Uh, started streaming so so it's only taken him about eh, 49 minutes to get up get up to the where he is now so it's not bad I was thinking it was gonna take longer what I am curious about though is let me just go ahead and so he's uh, hitting chain of pawns so they're they're both getting pretty close so one's in Carabasset Valley, so he'll be here 
probably another 15, 15, 20 minutes. And Chain of Ponds, that's about a 25. So, I mean, they sh both should actually be here about the same time. Uh, so maybe this is kind of the midpoint. still on the crossing? We are still on the crossing. Beautiful. Let's foul the crossing. Alright, well, we're going to pull this train forward and uh, then we'll reverse it back onto go on to track 2 here, which track 2 is let's see, 14 or 1371. That track is 1550, so that's classification track 2, so Any idea what rolling stock will be released with the Carabasset? Plenty. Not a clue. Um, so actually, ooh, yep, got to turn that down. Um, so we do have these 73-foot center beams here, which are very, very nice. I'll actually show you some of the rolling stock that we do have uh, included with the railroad here in a, in a little bit. Let me just get this train kind of moving through, and I can kind of give you a better uh, idea. Or, well, I guess I could show you some now. So Mal painted, uh, let's see, he painted some H1Ks, kind of just did a patch job uh, over here. You can see you have one that says Carabasa Valley on it and then patched Conrail H1Ks. Uh, we have these uh, former Pan Am boxcars, so we have some of these. You'll probably get those. Uh, we do have the milk tanks, uh, so you'll, you'll be getting uh, those as well. Um, of course, we got our 73-foot center beams. We got, uh, let's see what else we got. We got the the log bulkheads, which will come out with the route as well. Um, which those are over here. So you have these log flats, and then an assortment of box cars and, and so on and so forth. We do have some Evans Bay hoppers, which uh, those would get kind of thought about, uh, and we will we're probably going to be skinning up some of those 57-foot reefers. Um, and you'll probably get those. I'd like to have all the rolling stock available to you guys to, to use on day one. So, definitely center beams and stuff like that. Um, I would love to have some of those log spine cars, but you know, we might see if we just can't use a DLS asset and maybe try to make it look good. Um, that's kind of really up to Sean and stuff like that. I mean, I could. You know, if I had a blank, I could do it myself, but weathering is not my strong suit, so. Need to find a good woodship hopper that isn't bugged out these days. Um, Of course, I need to talk to Join and Rail because uh, I know Chance made them, but there we have our own um, container skin that we made uh, for the e I'm Skip containers that you would see frequently kind of rolling down through here. So I need to talk with JR and, and so on and so forth. Uh, locomotives are a little bit easier or a little harder to talk about because there are so many. Locomotives? Wait. Oh, I, I went past the wrong switch. I'm like, wait, what? Um, currently on the roster... Let me just pull that up real quick. So what's painted and what's um, planned is completely different. So currently speaking... And we're I don't know if all of them are going to be available. We'd really like them to be. Um, but... Forget how this is labeled. Oh, so red needs a model. It's currently speaking completed. We have the Jeep 35, the Jeep 38-2. Um, 
We want to do a Jeep 28-2. It needs kit bash. Uh, we have the SW 1500s. Of course, the F9B, F7B, UF5, which is for uh, our name train, the Flagstaff Flyer. GP 16 is completed. GP 39H-2. Uh, GP 59H-3, SD 40-2F, SD 40T-2, GP 40-2. Um, so on and so forth. I mean, it's, it's a pretty big roster. I could go on for, for hours about it. Um, which, if I can come over to here, I suppose I'll pull up this. So, as of this list, and I'll probably get yelled at by Sean, because I have probably some of the wrong locomotives on here. Uh, which I probably do. So, and most of these need a model, and a lot, probably a lot of these are going to get axed, because we don't have a model. Um, you know, so we'll, we'll need a model one for it, which is just the hardest thing is trying to get one. Uh, but currently speaking, we have the Alco C430, which that's probably going to get axed and replaced by something. Um, the GP28-2, the GP30M, the GP35, GP38-2, GP40X, GP40-2, GP50, GP60, SD24-2, SD39, SD40 2 2 F 2 W M 2 T 2 45 X 45 2 50 M. I think all the 50 2s went because uh, we retired those because we had too many helpers. Uh, the 60, the 60 M, the SG 70, we have the 77 I, which you'll see on the back end of uh, the northbound train here very soon. That's our uh, special unit. It's a one off, it's a rebuild. SV 1500. C30 S7, MLW M420 W, and M630 W. Um, and then, of course, we have the pasture roster, which is the GP39 H 2, GP42 H, and the GP59 H 3. But again, a lot of that roster will probably be changing. Um, since, again, we need a model for most of those, and also uh, a lot of those locomotives in the history of the Carabasset uh, are. You know, we picked up second hand and are approaching long past their lifespan. Uh, so there is talks about maybe modernizing, maybe using some of Audi's new uh, ACUs and stuff like that, and uh, trying to modernize the Carabasta because also the models aren't really nice and you know, would be worth maybe uh, upgrading the Carabasta uh, motive power uh, to kind of keep up with longevity. I don't remember what Sean and I discussed about possibly axing. I know there were talks about um, you know, like our Alcos, our M4, our MLWs, the GEs and stuff like that. Uh, possibly even some of our older EMD power may be going. Again, it, it, it's been a while since we had that conversation. Uh, oh yeah, no, Audi is phenomenal. I mean, even the barns are probably going to be going in the next couple of years. So, I mean, the barns I would like to push out with the route because those are my babies. I like the barns. There's no no real reason to have them, though. They're, they're pretty shit units, and parts commonality is miserable with the barns. Uh, let's see. So he is back there. Took him that long. Why is he crawling? He is should not be crawling. He is supposed to be going pretty darn quick. That's a 50 mile an hour section of track. I mean, in theory, that's kind of what you're getting. Um, you know, I'll show you some of the locomotives here and and stuff that we do have completed that Sean has worked on. Once we get this movement kind of situated. So this is kind of the last movement until the next train arrives. Um, I mean, in theory, I could break it down a little further because I think some of these center beams are going to be staying up here, maybe. You know, but the roster is thought out pretty much all the way back to our inception uh, as a railroad from the uh, the fictional Bigelow Eastern. 
which I think is a, a American subsidy of the Commonwealth, if I remember correctly. I don't know if it's candid, but I know that was something Sean had discussed way back. Um, so the Carabas essentially in some aspect is maybe a uh, has derived from the Commonwealth, you know, a and so on and so forth. But again, not entirely sure if that's candid or if that's a part of the history. That was just something Sean had discussed. Um, but I mean, a lot of our 90s locomotive, uh, you know, are still here. You know, we really haven't retired many locomotives. Um, I mean, even Sean, he... We had the Jeep 15s way back, and I think he's kind of axed those from the history entirely. Uh, so I don't think we ever had Jeep 15s, which is kind of sad. I do like me some Jeep 15s. But he's not particularly a fan, so. But a lot, some of the 90s uh, locomotives are kind of even still hanging around, even some of our older locomotives. Um, you can still see some locomotives hanging around in our old paint scheme as well. Uh, simply just phase one, phase two. Phase one is a very, very simple scheme, and phase two is what you see on most of our locomotive power. Not exactly sure how many phase ones there still are running around. That's uh, something kind of Sean again. The, the roster's more his thing. Um, I kind of throw in my input, and then, you know, he tells me what he thinks and then so on and so forth a lot of our bread and butter is what you see up here at the yard right now you know some SD40 sitting up in the back for helper service. Our Jeeps, Jeep 38, Jeep 40s. I think the most common units you see on the railroad are Jeep 40s and SD 40s. So, you know, we have a shit ton of SD 40s. Um, I want to say our numbering series for SD 40s, um, I think it's like 1006 to 1049. And then we have the 2Fs, 921 and 924, the 2Ws, which is 1029 to 1034. And Know, so on and so forth. So, I mean, there's quite a lot of SD40s rolling around. And even the T dash, the M dash twos, 3121 to 3128, T dash twos, 1000 to 1005. So, I mean, SD40s are everywhere in all their different variations and so on and so forth. Push this back a little further. And right there we'll do. Oh, there's a Toby. Hello, sir. So it's just the beginnings of the next train that's going to be heading south. Uh, so we'll kind of set that up right here. And now we got to get ready for the arrival of the trains. Which we'll go ahead and already kind of line him up. Make sure that everything is set and correct. Kind of line him into the yard already. And we'll make our way back towards the depot. Or the yard office, anyhow. And we'll just, uh, we'll kind of wait. We'll kind of just wait and hang out until that next train gets here so again I don't know why he went so slow past the station he should have been kind of cruising by there that's uh, 40 40 45 around that that, po that point so
But we do have quite a bit of uh, motive power already painted up for for you guys, and you know where it's going to get hosted and what's going to get released is completely a mystery. You know, I, I have no clue where the Carabas is going to get hosted. I have no clue what's going to get released with it and stuff like that. What we can get perms for, what we can't get perms for, you know, and that will ultimately kind of decide what happens. You know, uh, I like to think we're as a team in good standing with a lot of different people, but like I said, where the route will actually end up is completely and entirely a mystery. So I might actually have a phase one unit up in the shop over here. Which if that's the case, I can kind of show you what that looks like. And keyword might though, I don't actually know if I have that unit still up there, which looking, I don't. kind of plop in some locomotives so you can just kind of take a look. So let's let's take a gander. Let's kind of run down the line. That's old stuff. These are the Jeep-15s, which obviously we don't use anymore. The F-7s can't show because, um, you know, they're old. We do have the Jeep-35s, which are all high hood still, and loud. Loud. Uh, but this is kind of phase one. Get the, kind of the gist. I mean, it's not a very complex scheme. Although phase two, I think, does not look very good on high hood units. Uh, phase one, however, I believe, in my humblest opinion, does. So yeah, there's phase one. So again, you get kind of the idea on the Jeep 35. Of course, we have the Jeep 38-2. We have the multi, you know, different variations. This is the HP Trains model, which is shiny. Very, very shiny. And there's a couple of special units on the 38s. We have the Bicentennial for the state of Maine, which, unfortunately, now Sean's going to read. Can you just, like, stop it? Thank you. Again, very, very shiny. I don't think any of our motors are that shiny. Uh, of course, then we have number 220 which was for the 20th anniversary of September 11th. Very, very nice unit that Sean did up. Very, very nice unit. I feel bad because again, he's gonna have to redo this and I know he hated those stars. Uh, but we have the uh, FDNY and the NYPD logo. But then, of course, we have the regular uh, 208 and 214, which is, uh, I think, what we're using currently on uh, over there. Then we have some pine liner units, which we have the GP39 H-2. Uh, we have the GP40-2H, which I love it, love that. We have a GP40-2, uh, same, you know, it's just this, but individually painted up, weathered in different ways. So you have that. 
think the cab is currently broken. We have the GP59 H-3. We've had that for a while. And we, of course we just have a standard GP60. Which I haven't used those units in forever. We have the M420W, which it worked fine in Tain, but something to 19 broke these, and I don't know if Sean ever got that fixed, which kind of sucks because I really like this unit. Yeah, no, that, that cheap 40 to... Uh, that thing's a long... You know, I think just compared to a standard Jeep... Can I... Can you just please... Thank you. Yeah, you can see it's a little bit longer. Not sure if that's because they have HEP and stuff like that, or, or why it's longer, but... You know... It is long. It's long. We have the SD40 uh, M-2, which if you could please turn around. Which I know I can kind of... There. Of course we have the T-2s, which these are original. You know, we've had these hanging around for a long, long time. Uh, my personal favorite, of course, the barns. I mean, they just look quite sophisticated in the in our paint scheme. I think this paint scheme was kind of meant for it. And originally, this is what the Carabas was based off of was a CMQ's paint job on the uh, on the barns. So, of course, the standard uh, SD40. This is a Milwaukee kind of dilapidated phase one looking patch unit and here's just a standard 40-2 uh, you know pretty pretty run of the mill here's another number series because all these have different heritage heritages heritages sure um, so all these are kind of coming from different places the 45-2s which I love that idling sound, although I wish those had, they were on the, uh, don't like deck mounted uh, ditch lights. Here's the M, da or the 50M, pretty standard. We need to see one of the barns get painted in the passenger scheme. Uh, that maybe could be something we could talk to Sean about, but I don't know if there'd be much use for them. I mean, he wants them gone. Uh, SD60, which of course the ditch lights are where God intended. Uh, 60Ms, these are all individually painted, but again, you get the idea. The old 75Is, which we don't use anymore. Here's the 77, which again, this is our kind of special unit. And then, you know, we have our SW1500s, which I don't believe I had. These are original, like, you know, way, way back. And then we got a caboose. That's kind of it, really. I mean, there's not a whole lot else. Um, oh, wait. No, I forgot. Uh, there are some units down here kind of hanging around. So here's the uh, M630W. So there's phase one. So that's kind of what you would have seen in the 90s. Um, and then here's phase two, which I think is 08 and up. Um, these, which I love, the SD70s from Audi. Just a kind of myriad of uh, box cars and uh, other rolling stock. That's kind of all the roster that we have painted at the moment. Where are you? He is crawling up here. Don't mind the ditch lights being porch mounted unless they are the stu. Ugh, don't even get me started on those CSX uh, ditch lights. So actually, these guys should be pulling in roughly about the same time, so we'll have a little bit of action here going on in just a few minutes which will entail uh, one train slapping these helpers on and the other train pulling into the yard, so I guess we should probably get someone on board this train. Ooh, 
Nice horn. I like that horn. That's a nice horn. My beacon doesn't work. No. Upsetting, truly. Yeah, I don't think Sean would put the uh, the barns into a passenger scheme. I think, like I said, he wants those gone. Um, and plus, there's really no place for the barns, even in passenger service, because um, we have older F units that we've uh, restored and have kept running for currently the Flagstaff Flyer, formerly the Lock Mechanic Limited. Um, but yes, there's really no space for the barns, and if they go, they're just gonna go. Uh, should be another tra that train should be coming around the corner here in a minute. Which, yeah, he's already... See, there he is. Just trucking along. The ST-70, that is. We'll wait here by the crossing. He's just trucking along. And it's just pretty much a, a unit train. It's nothing too interesting or spectacular. This is one of another Audi's beauties, his standard cab SD70s, which I am in love with. I wish we, I wish this railroad had more of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The D, the uh, HP trains model is nice, but it just didn't age well. Though right now I'm trying to emulate dirt racing, Albany and Western scheme. It's holy fuck. This guy is pretty much where he needs to be, so. Arriving helperless with his uh, empty trash. And then the other train. Now, he will pull up to about, I believe, here. Yeah, he's on the uh, Flagstaff Yard siding. This train is still just creeping along, taking his dear sweet time. Oh, there he is. Jesus. Fifteen. Jesus, why are you doing fifteen? Why in the world are you doing 15? That is ridiculous. That is dumb. But I guess uh, that's how it goes, I suppose. Level 
of all that lag. Ah, yes, very nice. Sorry, I have uh, notifications muted due to streaming mode. Let's see, I don't believe there's track markers here. There is not. Well, now he's picking up his steam. Jesus. Alright, just make sure everything is good. Everything is good, just waiting. Okay, like whomever can uh, get here and get everything done first. Now what I'm hoping is, is this switch also doesn't break open in the middle of the train, because that is something else that happens a lot with AI traffic, is the switches will just kind of open up. Ah, yeah, it's very nice. I'm actually surprised you could even paint on Audi's maps, because, Jesus. Weird that again, that this train was doing 15 and now is suddenly back up to speed. That uh, it's pretty much already here now. So I don't know where exactly he's stopping, but it should be somewhere around here. Well, it's not necessarily that he wants to be the only one that modifies his models. It's more or less that he wanted to save time when mapping his models because he uses Substance Painter. Someone will correct me if I'm thinking of the wrong thing. Um, but he uses something that basically maps it for him. So instead of mapping it logically, it just maps it to wherever. Um, so nothing particularly makes sense. And I mean, the thing is, is that it saves him a lot more time, so he doesn't have to do, spend, because I mean, half of the battle, I suppose, is just mapping the damn thing. Um, but yeah, so he, he just goes ahead and puts it through Substance Painter, and it just maps it for him. Say, this train should be coming to a stop here pretty quickly. Guess the crews in North Anson didn't block this train very well. Cause I'm looking at some of these cars and a little buried at the moment.
something would tell me we have arrived at our waypoint. Just a little, uh, can't figure out why it's so laggy through here for me. That is certainly a, a display of signals. Approach restricting. All right. Let's get ourselves cleared into the yard. Restricting. So I guess we can proceed past that. So he's all set up. So what we're going to do is we're going to clear that train into the yard. And then we'll get this train going since the uh, approaching train is on the main. So I'm going to take manual control of this. Handling my ass. But yeah, so like I said, with with Audi, I, I, it's nothing to do with that. He doesn't want anyone to modify it. It's just unfortunately that's just how it worked out. With he spends a lot of time creating the model and then. It takes a long time to map it, so he found a way that he can quickly map something. Unfortunately, it comes at the sacrifice of us not really having easy access to modify it, so... Quite a beautiful area too. I've been up here before. There's a little lookout right there that looks out across the lake and whatever, and it's just a beautiful area. A little causeway. Of course, in the spring and winter time, this is a little lower because they lower the level of the lake, so it's a lot more kind of wetlands. But in the summertime, it's just really a causeway right across the lake. But yeah, the barn scheme that you have done up is pretty nice. I like that. Albany and Western. Very, very nice scheme. I actually kind of like the silver outline of the cab right there and uh, the windows and stuff like that. It's actually quite nice. Works well for the barn. So we got a restricting as we come into the yard. <laughs> but we 
we were given permission to come past it, so I'm assuming that's how it works. And of course, the game will tell me I blew past a red signal. I know. Okay. It counted as a green, so... Ah. Well, either way, it's still a nice scheme, so... Alright, now we're entering the lead for the yard. Carabasa Barn right here. Very nice. 're into the arrival track here we only got one it's track one pull up alongside the outbound consist. nice and gentle. Where is the rear of my train? It is just hitting the lead for the yard. So I'll go ahead and just stand by here real quick. Go ahead and close that switch. Well, it's a pretty big train, so...
slowly as it goes, just ever so slowly through the yard. Like I said, this actually worked out perfectly with the timing of everything, so... All empties, but need to make sure that we have appropriate power to get up, so we're going to take those helpers back down anyways, so there's no reason that train's here. I don't think I'm going to need that. Slowly approaching the end, which, let me see, where is the rear of our train? Uh, it's just coming up the track, so we should have enough room. Oh yeah, no, we'll have plenty of room. I forget how long this train is anyways. It is uh, 3,965 feet. This is a 4,100 foot siding, so the whole thing should fit, no problem. Actually, I'll run back. Uh, if I hit the right button, there we go. Let me run back here. Oh yeah, no, we're gonna fit with ease, even with the helpers. Does the speaking turn on? It does not. Ah, truly and entirely upsetting. What's the point of beacons then? What's the point of life if you can't play the beacons? We do have quite a quite a consist to sort through. Uh, looking ahead, we can't start doing that until this train departs. Which once this train gets parked, they'll go ahead and move the helpers on to the uh, garbage train. He'll then get cleared out of the yard to start heading south towards. Uh, is that? A, I forget actually what movement that is. That's. I believe it's heading towards Canabec. Is it? No, I'm sorry, Farmington. So he's heading towards Farmington. That's right, because he's just heading straight for the the interchange. So beautiful. Just keep a little forward momentum going. Dim those headlights. Love that track, just ends right there. I don't know why, just little aspects like that that I like. A lot of great talent has gone into this project, and I love it. Alright, that should be... Yep, his consist is in the siding. Whole consist is in the siding. Nice. The 
little more. Ooh. Beautiful. I'll do right there. All right, next step. So we'll go ahead and close the switch over here before I inevitably forget. Actually quite nice seeing a, a pretty populated yard. So now our next step is to get these helpers over to where they need to be. Is going the wrong way. Alright, so the helpers are on their way now. Go make sure that the switches are all set appropriately. They are. They are so far good. Is set. Now he's going to back all the way up here out onto the main, to which then he will cross over here once he gets that po to that point. And once that train is on the move, we'll disconnect the uh, power from the arriving train, throw them over here on the fuel pads, get them all set and ready to go for the movement south. And we can start taking a look and seeing what we need to do with the uh, the consist needs to be broken down. So. Quite a nice unit Sean did. Very, very happy with these. That horn, that's also a pretty good horn. I like that. I don't know, it's always interesting watching, you know, new models come out from Sean and stuff like that. And it's the same song and dance, you know, with the Carabasset schemes. I mean, it's. I've been seeing these schemes since 2017, but. Whenever he brings out a new model, it's, it always just looks incredible. So, it's actually a one off um, that I don't think is getting adopted by the railroad. Um, Sean's not particularly a fan of the model, and well, according to him, we don't have any use for it, which I'm not going to sit here and say I totally disagree, especially with his, you know, when he explains his reasoning. But it is a very interesting unit, and I do enjoy seeing it, but this C thirty nine eight E. Though I'm not particularly a fan of the numbers here on the cab, which need to be kinda up here, but 
It's an interesting looking unit, I have to say. It looks quite nice in Karabashic, Karabashic, Karabasic colors, if I could stop having a stroke. But unfortunately, didn't have a use on the rare, which I'm quite upset about, because the horn on it alone is quite nice. Sean's not a big GE person, so inevitably our roster doesn't have a lot of GEs. Yeah, like my airlines are more of a Boeing guy, so my virtual airlines don't particularly have a lot of Airbuses in them, if ever. Yeah, pretty much. That was freaking stroke there, just trying to say that word. Sorry, I was checking something real quick. So a shame that we got to back all the way up here just to get back on the lead to go forward again. Also a shame that a unit with this nice of a horn Nice to have some U-boats. Oh, it would be so nice to have U-boats. Originally, U-boats were supposed to be on the roster. U-18Bs I had planned out. But they age about as gracefully as a banana in the hot sun, so... I guess just in, you know, Sean's opinion, EMDs are just proven to just age a little more gracefully, per se. Uh, opposed to their GE counterparts. Alright, so we're off the lead. I say he's not wrong, so and I know that. Cause I mean I think at one point we had GEs on the or I wanted GEs on the roster, and we were even thinking about AC six thousands to end up on the roster, but I don't think those will ever happen. Although there are renderings of Sean with an AC six thousand painted up somewhere. Alright, we can kind of get going a little bit. We got a train to hook up to because I don't want to be out here all, all too long. And looking at the time, I do get to start thinking about heading off and getting some food in me. At least early GEs, when you start getting into B40s and such, those are pretty good. Yeah, I think, I don't know, we might have some of those on the roster. It's hard to know what GEs are on the roster and what GEs aren't. Like, um. Uh, Yeah, looking here at the, the Google spreadsheet, the B38 AD, we have it on the roster, but needs replacing. And then someone typed in B36 7. Uh, but there really aren't any GEs on the roster anymore. Um, you know, we have the C39 8 E. But even Sean had been like, you know, why do we have that? Ah, just a pair of SD40s rolling along.
Well, there was a signal supposed to be there, too. Yeah, no. We will not be buying P-42s. I don't think, anyways. Pine liner would be such a bitch of a scheme to put in the, on the P-42s, and... I think, again, Sean's perfectly happy with his EMD motive power. Alright, now, do I have a fret on the back of this train? I do. So I'll have to roll up and disconnect that. This train's gonna get cleared at least to North New Portland. We're on. Got our manned helpers back here. Got our Fred on the SD40. All right. So heading out of here is going to be. Need to hit north in Portland, Maine, north, which will cause him to. No, please stop. I don't want you going yet. No going yet. I still need to dispatch you out. Yeah, what is that? Oh, crap. Let's see. It was Stratton. No, stop again. I don't really want you going. I wish it would only go when I tell it to go. The siding. Nope, main north, main south. Good. Drive via track mark. Bigelow. Be care of Bassett siding. Or care of Bassett main south. Then we'll go. Bigelow. Kingfield. Main south and drive to track mark Bigelow North New Portland siding. Okay, excuse you. North New Portland siding south.
And there he goes. Actually, no, we'll take the helpers off first. Since we're already down here. Oh, they don't have a person on them. Oh, actually, that's a pretty good idea. I didn't think about doing the wait an hour thing. No, well, that's one way of doing that, I suppose. Just make sure that we take it slow, look at the switches correctly. Did they hit the crossover yet? Why are you ever redden? medium clear. Go, go, go. Get your trash train out of here. grab the lead engines and then we'll start taking a look at uh, what we need to do to break this train down. Now, this is uh, the ASC-77 by the way.
Oh, did it really just freeze on me? It did, didn't it? Ah. Uh... Well, that hasn't happened in a while. <sighs> All right. Well. We get an F and oh wait, you already got an F. And, okay, all right, F's in chat, I guess. Let me just uh, I'm gonna put my own F in chat. Here we go. Yeah. Um. That is mildly disappointing. Okay. Uh, I guess I can show you guys uh, some stuff. Show you some stuff. Uh, we'll go over here. We'll see if uh, this wants to open up. We'll go. We'll go here. Does this want to open up? Can you please open up? Just, just like you to open up. We'll see if it uh, works. I just would like it to work. Please work. Please work. Um. Oh. Okay. So I'm just gonna quickly resize this. I'm not gonna keep this because uh, I don't like display captures. No, can you come back, please? All right. So throw us in the corner here. Hopefully, y'all can see this. Okay. So I guess we'll uh, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll look a little bit at. The how things work um, spreadsheet wise so how I was uh, labeling trains and what you can expect for industries and this will be available information to you as well uh, once the route is released uh, more in document form and not in um, kind of spreadsheet um, so this is the online industry so far for uh, the Bigelow sub going as far south as um, the North New Portland branch um, so it kind of gives you an idea of what you'll be looking at uh, all the way from Lock Mechanic down to um, North Anson. So starting at milepost 81, just outside of Lock Mechanic Yard, and actually I think it's within milepost or yard limits, is uh, BB Sakri. They are a uh, uh, candy factory. Uh, it's known as LM68L. It's pretty much it can be done by a mechanic yard job, really. Um, but it gives you an idea of you know what what you're going to be expecting, what you're going to be taking down, um, how many spots you can throw it in, average a day, and then cars per week. It's a cannery factory, so it's pretty busy. So you do have a pretty good amount of traffic heading up that way or interchanging in via CP. Uh, probably coming in via CP because again it's a Canadian candy factory, so it's probably going to be regulated through Canadian standards and their stuff. So. Won't really have a lot of traffic coming up from the States, I don't believe. Oh, it's my cat, and I'm petting it, and he enjoys it. Uh, next up is uh, St. Augustine to Woburn, and it's uh, industries down there, Warwick Manufacturing, uh, Multiboy FL, or Multibois, uh, Fontaine, a lot of lumber down here, uh, as you can kind of tell. Um, and just a little bit of notes about how it's the uh, the power or how the movement should be arranged. 
uh, requires power bookend blocks uh, south north power um, and then of course you have the code the, uh, the industry code so Warwick lumber uh, or Warwick logs um, Fontaine logs Fontaine uh, center beams uh, this is Montebois Montebois um, Witch popper and then center beams and then um, I believe that's actually power so you have power on either end of the train uh, to move the train around I believe it is so um, you know and so on and so forth um, just kind of goes through I mean it's the Kingfield turn down here um, and how the Kingfield turn should be arranged and stuff like that and how it gets worked um, and then of course you go through the Abenaki and we have just stuff roughed in for the time being um, an RV center what no we're not servicing an RV center oh this is Northern Main Junction wow that's a lot of industries up in Northern Main Junction Get your brothers, that's ice. Main paper and janitorial. Everett S. Prescott. Down east. Emulsions. Main distributors. Main commercial tire, yep. Bangor, steel services, lane construction, pike industries. Man, and this is all Mal. I mean, he did a lot of this. Um. So over here on the left also, it's just the crew base, so where this gets worked out of. Uh, so like you saw here on the Bigelow, um, there's two jobs that come out of Mechanic, and there's one job that comes out of North Anson on the Bigelow. Uh, but everything else gets serviced out of Flagstaff. That's one, two, three, four jobs. Um, Flagstaff's pretty much there along mile, mile post 41. Uh, so you can see the closest job is here along the uh, Stratton branch at the old Rangeley Secondary. Uh, for work. Hey, Toby. Oh, oh, hey, come back. I was going to pet you. Um, the furthest jog I believe it has to make is pretty much, eh, I mean, you could say 20 some odd miles up to uh, Coburn loadout. Then it has to go all the way down to milepost 17. You know, that's eh, pretty equidistance. I mean, 23, 24 miles down to uh, the Kingfield branch and then. 20-ish, 22 miles of the Coburn loadout, so. Uh, but you know, looking here, I mean, this is kind of what you'll expect in terms of industries and stuff like that. Uh, the Kennebec sub, which is North Anson all the way down to um, Waterville. This is all stuff worked out of uh, pretty much Skowhegan right here, so you get an idea of what's going on, and these are industries we're already fairly familiar with. Um, Stuff that, you know, I've, I've worked this local on a stream before. Uh, I switched out that plant, so 89-foot pipe flat, Jesus. Northeast Doran. That's a trucking company. We don't have anything going to Northeast Doran, I don't think. Oh, wait, no, it's Carrier Chippin', which, again, we don't need to go to because they have trucks. Nordica, this one's a little tough because we're trying to figure out what exactly is on the Nordica. And the Farmington Secondary, which didn't think we actually had anything on the secondary. I don't know where this is all coming out of. But the bread and butter right now is the Bigelow. Um, looking at train symbols, this is kind of what we have roughed in right now. Um, I'm not sure what the red's for. But as you can see, like we have a, a Mechanic to Flagstaff, and then a Flagstaff to Mechanic. Uh, we don't have a Kennebec to Flagstaff, which needs to come in, because Kennebec to Flagstaff is our most important move um, yeah that's where a lot of our stuff comes in is from uh, North Hanson oh, yeah. Kennebec Yard and stuff like that so um, but looking down here you can see the uh, the local movements and stuff like that so we have um, <coughs> LSK 115 Skowhegan uh, so you have SIS here. Um, that's Cowhegan Industrial Spur, which I think is cool that, you know, this is a from my notes and stuff like that on my phone, and I think I can understand now where some of these number designations are coming from. Um, this originally was just, you know, we run a number series until it runs out, 
and Mal, it looks like he's going through and taking the number series and turning it into how we designate uh, the train numbers. Um, which I think is kind of interesting, because this is very archaic, and this is old-style uh, Carabasset stuff. Uh, of course, the yard IDs are, are all there, and uh, the industries that we do have for now. Um, and then, of course, hi, Toby. Yes, you are a cat. Where are you? Where'd you go? Oh, there you are, being a man. Um, and so on and so forth. But you see here, you know, we got uh, LS, or LS FS42, which is the Kingfield turn. Let's go down to the Kingfield branch, or KFB. And you can tell where uh, my viewership dropped off. I have eight viewers, and then I, my stream died, and you know, we got four. I'm still pissed about that. I was That's pretty shitty. Um, but yeah, so we... Uh, and here's some of the, the daily movements, the unit trains. So we have... Uh, trash empties, trash loads, and extra just in case. We have apparently a feed train, which I don't know why we have a feed train. Um, yeah, we got a feed train and feed empties. Um, silver aggregate loads, engines for mineral processing, uh, which is Sebastopol to mineral processing facility, which I don't know where that's going to be. And of course, we have KBMP. Uh, kind of back to mineral processing, mineral processing the mechanic, so on and so forth. So interchange with CSX down in Farmington. So get an idea of what they're kind of looking at. And of course, if we go here, which I'll zoom out real quick, this is a uh, track chart that Mal made. Um, so this is stuff that you, like I said, you'll be getting with the route uh, in documentations and stuff like that to kind of help you um, figure out, you know, what's going on with the route, like we have here. Um, You know, we have here the, 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 yeah, if I can spit it out in English, the track chart for Flagstaff Yard. So before I this chart existed, you know, Mal kind of went in and, and determined what goes on at the yard. And, you know, I like it. It makes sense to me. Um, you know, I think, honestly, it works fine just as is. Um, you know, there's the crossing there. And you can see these are local tracks. Here's classification tracks, you know, arrival departure. There's just an extra track here. Uh, there's a MOW track here that's a thousand foot. Uh, there's just a stub end 630 foot track over there that you know you could shove cars into if you need to. Um, you know we got the south lead, we got the north lead, and there's just a random platform over here um, which no longer is the station and stuff like that. So I don't really know what's going to go there. Might be an industry of sorts. Might throw something in there. Um, I suppose I will go in and if I can find it. It's like we also have the chain of ponds paper mill. And then we have mechanic yard. So uh, paper mill is pretty, pretty straightforward. So you have the main coming off. You have the south yard and you have the north yard. So you have two yards to kind of move stuff around. So this is kind of your bread and butter down here. Longest track being about 800 feet. Um, you know, you got your paper loading, you got your paper yard. Um, you got cornstarch goes here, a 550 foot track here, which I don't really know what goes on there, but you can just run around your train if you need to. Your north yard, your wood chip unloader, chip storage tracks, uh, slurry and clay, an 800 foot stub in, acid log yard, so on and so forth, and then mechanic. And mechanic's a pretty simple yard. Uh, there's no real classification tracks, because uh, a lot of it is just interchange traffic. So, um, you do have a kind of a CP area over here for um, for uh, you know anything they need, but then you got CP out to uh, Lennoxville and Lock Magnetic. Then you have uh, kind of a Y that leads back in. This is towards Jackman, um, but this heads off. This is CBVR towards. Um, I mean, you could just say Maine, really. So towards the U.S., but this is kind of uh, what what it would look like, you know. So you can accurately come in and you know and go, oh, how you know what what's this yard, you know, what do we do here and stuff like that, or, or what goes on here, and then here you go. Because like I said, I didn't know anything about Flagstaff Yard until I got this chart. I go, well, what the hell is this track, and what does this track do, and why are these tracks, and what's 
class, you know, it's classification yard. If I would have went red right there, you know, so you can classify your train and kind of break it down and, and so on and so forth. And, you know, uh, the tracks aren't very long, but you can get stuff done. Uh, you know, your departure track's 3,900 feet, so, I mean, you can break it. Uh, you can... Oh, hi, Toby. Hello again. Yes, you are a cat. Um, so you can kind of break the train down there, but it's it's really helpful information, and I'm glad that I have people like Mal on board with the project, um, and, and you know, and Sean and Ethan and stuff like that. They're all phenomenal, but Mal has put some thought and effort into these, and I, I do like how they look, and uh, this is what we'll be going with for, for you guys, so that way you can appropriately, because I think something that me and Mal both equally kind of complained about was that, you know, you're given... Let's just take a. Let's just take a. I'm trying to think, is it coal country that we use as example, or let's just say tide water. Let's just say tide water. We'll take tide water for example. Uh, you know, you have a route. Okay, great. But what goes where? You know, unless you run a session, you know specifically what goes there. But it's like you can get kind of an idea of what goes on with tide water. But it's like you don't have an idea like what what's the yard used for and stuff like that or what goes here what goes over there or what what industry takes what where are the cars going what kind of cars do you need coming in and on the route you know coal country i guess makes a little more sense because it's all just you know coal i don't really know what else is on coal country other than coal and eagle river <laughs> it's really just logging there isn't too much else that goes on with eagle river um Um, yeah. Hmm. Anyways, um, so, but, you know, we don't have any idea of what goes on, you know, so you're just kind of left to your own devices, whereas this, it's like, oh, those are shop tracks. Oh, that's the fuel pad. Oh, helpers go here. Oh, these are just random tracks. You know, you have an 800-footer. And that's nice, too, is knowing how long is this track. So I can go, okay, I got about 750 feet of cars. Or I got a 750-foot consist that I want to move somewhere real quick. Uh, it's not going to fit there on the 620-foot track. And I need to leave this open because that leads into the yard. Um, these are kind of full up. Um, I could throw it over here, but it's a waste of space. That's too short. Oh, wait, there's an 800 foot tr uh, track right here, so let me just move stuff right there real quick. You know, so I know I, I got space. So it's quite informative, and I'm, I'm happy that he's put a lot of effort into it, but. Um, uh, true, but the addition I'm working on is going to be a bit like Black Mechanics. So I gotta figure that stuff out. Um, you know, Mechanic, like I said, this is kind of just the end of the line this is where everything gets interchanged there's uh, four arrival departure tracks because a lot of the stuff that does come up here is pretty much outbound or inbound uh, there is uh, two local tracks um, you know f if needed they're there but um, predominantly everything is pretty much for interchange um, and then I think CP uh, they, they'll they do work in mechanic uh, so they do have stuff here to go do that and, and go switch around a mechanic. But, but anyways, um, th <laughs> that crash has kind of ruined uh, ruined the mood. So um, pretty much going to end it there. So I'm going to head off for the night and go get some food and get ready for bed. So I appreciate you all for watching, and I'm sorry that <laughs> the stream crashed. I'll try to get it back uh, roughly to where it was so when we come in next time we can just go ahead and switch out the consists of course i probably should have saved the consists um so i could just plop it in but i'll go ahead and just repop the cars as best as i think they were or maybe i'll just kind of check the stream back and, and kind of replop everything another annoying thing is, is i set up all those car tags manually um but anyways i will catch you all in the next one so take it easy Thank <laughs> you.